table here. Always fun with Tony G at it. Liven up the action. And it is Webster, Chin Wei Lim, with two sixes, opening to 85,000. Anyone know how this nickname came about, Webster? Well, he looks like Emmanuel Lewis from the sitcom. Is that what it is? You know, I wasn't sure. I just figured there's a W in there and an E. So just finish it with... Let's just westernize okay. it and we'll go with Webster. Well, look at this here. Bryn Kenny stepping out with 10-6 suited on the button, applying some pressure on Chin Wei Lim, who's going to take a flop with his pair of sixes. His name is Webster. Okay, right. We'll use that as well. Webster. Well, here we go. Flush draw for Bryn Kenny. And he can rep the ace, potentially. Yeah, this is a pot you would expect Bryn Kenny to win now because, you know, he's got a little piece. He can continuation bet no problem. Chin Wei Lim has to worry about getting three bet by any sort of ace combo, bigger pairs. Tough to continue with just two sixes on this board. But Kenny's such an aggressive player, so active. You're raising in the cutoff. He's on the button. He could be out there with the wide range, as we see. He could, but then you're out of position. You have to keep guessing on the turn and the river. You know, now a king comes. Like, what do you really beat now? I mean, it's tough to put Kenny on 10-6, when you, especially when you have two sixes. Well, he does take one card, but will he take another? Interesting spot for Bryn. Does he, does he decide to check back and give himself a free card for the flush? And he does. Well, Bryn Kenny doesn't care what the buy-in is. He's going to three bet 10 six of hearts. He's like, sure. I'm Bryn freaking Kenny. Look at me go. Let's talk about that. Okay. You're surprised by Bryn three betting this hand. Aren't I you? am. I am. You're not. I am. I know Bryn sometimes goes really wide. I'm still surprised he's got 10 six of hearts here. It just seems like such a weird non a hand that just doesn't make any sense to me. Why would he three bet this hand as opposed to any hand with a reasonable blocker or any hand that has more playability? This doesn't seem to have either one. Well, it's Bryn Kenny. We speculated on our podcast that maybe a little bit of the magic of Bryn Kenny is his threshold for what a spot is is a lot lower than everybody else. <laughs> yeah. He's like, anything reasonable is a spot. This is reasonable enough. It's suited. It can make a straight. Let's go. I'm in position. I guess I guess Chin's opening a lot that Ken, that Kenny's even deciding to do this, right? Probably. You would, Pro you would think. Maybe, maybe that's not even true. He's Bryn Kenny. Maybe he just doesn't care. Maybe he doesn't care. Speaking of caring, should should Chin care about the fact that the stack depth is not ideal when he calls here? Should he be considering folding preflop? I mean, I think he should. I This may be controversial. I know he has a pocket pair, but stack to pot is problematic already. We can't play this for the implied odds of hitting a set. Now we're going to be out of position with a hand that doesn't play well when we don't hit a set against a guy who's almost always going to put us to multiple tough streets of decisions. I don't know how we get to showdown very often with this hand, so... Since we, the implied odds aren't there either, I just want to throw it away, personally. This is a reasonable point, and I'm pulled by that point. But I also am pulled by the knowledge that it's Bryn Kenny. Yeah. And the fact that we're both in late position and just being like, this hand is just too good to fold against Bryn <laughs> freaking Kenny. Yeah. Like, he's just printing money against me by three-betting whenever I open. What do I have to just three-bet, like, open, like, jacks plus? Like, it's like I mean, it's the old west, and I have to show that I have jacks in order to open and it, for it to be legal? Like... That doesn't sound good. I mean, there's a lot of hands that are a lot more playable than this. Like a king-queen even is so much more playable than two sixes, right? We just hit so much. We hit the board so much more yeah, often. Yeah, but, but uh, Chin just decides this is part of his range here. Yes, which that's right. I can't fault him that much against a player like Bryn Kenny. You're just going to have yeah. to make some difficult decisions post-flop. I mean, that is Bryn Kenny's whole point is to make your life hard, Yeah. right? So fair enough. He's good at it. Yeah. So flop comes out. It's a great one for Kenny in that he can rep an ace. Yeah. And he has a flush draw. It's great. Amazing. Him, him betting makes lots of sense. It's a small bet. 145 and a 620. You kind of want Chin to dump it even at this price. I swear to God, I do. I know. It's once again, it, maybe it's controversial. I just want to throw this hand away. We're losing to all trip aces. Kenny is going to see bet all his pocket pairs too. I think I think maybe all of them. So like, I, I just don't think we're ahead of enough of the range. And again, even if we're ahead and we call here, which of course Chin does, we see that. How are we going to play turns and rivers? Like, are we just going to not fold? Like, I just feel like it's it's very hard to get to showdown. So I just want to throw it away right now. But then if you're throwing it away right now, then you may argue, well, then we were just playing for the set value of it, which we couldn't do. Right. This board, though, with ace, ace, five is problematic. You know, it's like... Brittany has a lot of aces in his Brittany. three betting range. <laughs> Brittany, yeah. I just put it, throw it together. Brittany Kenny's got a lot of aces in the three betting range. Maybe all of the aces. But if betting. he has all of the aces, he probably also has a lot of other things. And we Maybe. see that he does. Yeah, so we do. it's we more do. important to think of it as a percentage of his three betting range sure. rather than total amount of combos. Of course. Of and course. maybe Chin's on to something as far as how wide Kenny's three betting range actually is. Yeah. I think I would feel compelled to call once I was here, especially at this price. It's possible as someone who calls a lot that I would sit here and be like, well... 
let's see one more street, man. Let's see if you're really going to fire again. Because obviously, now I'm basically repping a lot of medium aces or even pretty good aces. Not not ace king, but like ace jack, ace yeah. ten. Um, let's see if you fire again. I could see myself choosing to do that for three and a half lines. So I don't think it's crazy. And we do get to see that Kenny does not fire again yeah. on the king of diamonds. And my initial thought was a little surprised, thinking Kenny has a range advantage. He bet really small on the flop. Chin's gonna gonna show up obviously with a lot of hands here. Yeah. So it feels like with ten high, a bet makes a lot of sense. The reason not to bet that we came up with on our podcast is if we believe as Bryn Kenny that Chin is very wide pre flop with the amount of aces in his range, and that he's gonna call with like ace deuce suited plus. That would mean that a, a big swath of Chin's range, because there's not that much else available, especially when we block hearts, mm -hmm. pocket pairs in those hands, really, and maybe some king highs, which now hit a king. Um, a huge swath is trip aces that are never going to fold. That would be a reason to check. But if we believe Chin has a more traditional preflop calling range, and it's like ace-10 suited, ace-jack, and ace-queen for his aces, then I think we can get away with a bet uh, as far as range versus range. I mean, part of what we have to decide as Kenny is... What do we think Chin's calling with on the flop? And we think he's calling with like hands like sixes, sevens, eights, stuff like that. That gives us a lot more fuel to our fire to take another shot, right? If we think he's dumping those hands or other hands of that ilk, then it's um, it's harder to fire here. Well, I mean, even if he's calling with six, seven, and eights, if he also has ace, two suited plus, I still yeah. think maybe you don't want to fire. No, that, that's, that's a ton fair. of combos. Of no, that, that's fair. The other thing, of course, too, is Kenny may think there's just more chips to be made. By checking, now it's really hard to put him on a flush draw. When you combine that with the amount of aces and the amount of calls he thinks he's going to get on the turn, yeah. sort of unsuccessfully fold out his opponent. When he gets there, he thinks he gets paid almost always because that flush won't be as scary. Yeah, maybe that's the case. What's definitely the case is that the automatic overlay Poker Guys tournament happens on Nitrogen Sports every month. Use the link in our pinned tweet to get access to that. It's got an automatic overlay, Jonathan. That's why they call it the automatic overlay tournament, Grant. Although they don't actually call it that. Yeah, it's f at least 40% of the prize pool is, I won't call it donated, but Nitrogen puts that money in. It's amazing. Usually a lot more than that. Of course, they also have sports betting. They also have ca casino games. You get your money out in 90 minutes. This is the place to go. The other option was to push it through and apply pressure. Bryn Kenny's missed. And now a third check from Webster. And for Bryn, the decision is whether or not he's going to be able to get this through. He can credibly rep ace-king here. If he did have ace-king, he might check back that turn, set a little trap. He's representing for 335. I don't see how Chin Wei Lim can call based on the line that Bryn took. Oh, my goodness. He looks like he's reaching for chips, though. Could have been some posturing. Unbelievable. Wow. I can't believe that call. That is unbelievable from Chin Wei Lim. Well, that looks so casual and easy for Chin Wei Lim. It's like, oh, yeah, sure. 335, I'll call that. I mean, I have six. I have a, I have a pair. I have yeah. a call. I call. All right, we'll talk about his call, but first let's talk about Kenny's decision here. Okay. I am curious if maybe Kenny thought that Chin would be thinking more on his level than perhaps Chin is. I don't want to... To rob Chin of enough credit, but he doesn't have a huge resume in poker. He seems to be kind of a wealthy guy who plays a lot of high rollers. Mm -hmm. um, so I think Kenny is trying to represent a king. I think he thinks that the thing he can represent the best with this line is a king, and this is the sizing he would use with a king. And if you're playing against Jason Kuhn, maybe you can fold out all of Jason Kuhn's pocket pairs because he's going to be like, this makes sense for a king, Bryn. You got me, right? Or, or just a bad ace, but same idea. Yeah. Yeah. So repping, repping yeah, like a medium strength hand. Mm-hmm. But I think maybe Kenny overthought that and he should have been more price sensitive and thought like a bigger price is going to fold out Chin more frequently because he's not really worried about the story as much as an opponent like Jason Kuhn might be, right? What do you think? I mean, I think that all makes sense. That feels like the most likely thing that happened. It's possible that isn't it, just to give Kenny full credit here, that he's been making bets like this very successfully against Chin, telling the story that Chin just is like, feels like he has to call some sometime, and so he finally calls once. Right? Yeah, maybe so. Well, not having seen all their history leading up to this, even in this tournament, it's a little hard to know, but it does feel like it's more what you said, actually, that he sized it more for Dan Smith than for Chin here. Right, and I think that might have just been a, a mistake that Kenny made here. It's possible. Let's talk about Chin's call. Okay. It seems quite unreasonable. It does. But is it maybe reasonable against a guy like Bryn Kenny? Okay. Everything is maybe reasonable against a guy like Bryn Kenny if, you, if it involves putting chips in the pot and not throwing away your that, hand. That, is, to, that seems right. Especially yeah. on the river, right? Yeah. If we have a pair, we should always at least – we should never auto-fold against this guy. Um, it feels like we – okay, my initial hit is we've just got so many better hands to call with, don't we? Well, the question I asked <laughs> is, is this hand better to call with than pocket jacks with a heart? Right. 
like your pocket pairs that are higher than this without a heart are obviously better than this. Right. But not having a heart feels like a pretty big deal here. It does. I mean, it's interesting. I might think Ken, uh, Bryn Kennedy's going to bet a lot of turns with this heart draws. We see he didn't this time, though. Um, so I might be a little less inclined to think a heart matters. But, of course, it does matter somewhat, of course. Yeah. And it's helpful. Um, there's that. The question really is, is Bryn ever bluffing with hands that are actually beating sixes? Like right. a nine, like pocket eights, like pocket sevens. Then jacks are just better. Yeah. Then it becomes a problem to call with a hand like this. Yeah. I think Chin might have listened to a lot of Poker Guys podcasts and been like, well, Jonathan says, if I ever have anything against Bryn Kenny on the river, <laughs> I'm just going to call. Yeah. And guess what? Your method works, man. It, it's, it works it's every time. It's highly effective. Every time. It's like yeah. hole 45. Highly effective. So ultimately, where this hand falls in his distribution comes down to what you believe Kenny is betting on the river. If you think right. he's going to bluff with hands that Jonathan mentioned, sevens, any, any nine in his hand, stuff like that, then it becomes a problem. But if he's not, then this is better than Jack's with a heart if he's not going to bluff with those hands. Yeah, I agree with you. And I actually even wonder, like, how thin is Bryn going for value here? Like, he's telling a story with 335 that seems to be king, queen, yeah. queen, maybe queen, queen even. Maybe. maybe. Um, is he really betting those hands for value? Like, does he think he can get value against, let's say, Dan Smith or Jason Kuhn with worse hands if he bets King Queen? I don't know if he, like, I'm not even sure how good the story really is if you really take your time to, like, dissect it. Yeah, perhaps. Perhaps that's true. Ultimately, I think Chin was just like, it's Bryn freaking Kenny. Yeah, I'm, I'm calling, man. And, and it was right this time. It's cool when it's right. You the feel levy, good. The levy method works. Every time. Let's see what the solver said. Solver time. This was done by Wesley Cannon. If you want to see his full write-up, check out the Discord. That link is in the description of this video. All right. Let's go back to okay. the beginning. The flop. Solver wants Kenny to bet 83% of his total range. So a lot of betting on this flop. That makes plenty of sense, right? Sure. He wants him to check with king high non-hearts and some queen highs. That removes some king queens from his range, which we think he is trying to rep mm -hmm. by the time the river comes around. Yeah. Um, it does want Chin to call with his hand. Despite Jonathan Levy's objections. It, and not just this hand, but also all king queen and all king jack. Yep. So, so pretty wow. wide, pretty wide for Chin here. Yep. On the turn, Kenny is supposed to bet this hand almost 100% of the time. The solver really wants to bet this hand. Yeah. You can see why. It makes some sense. It even wants him to bet king, queen plus for value. That seems to be getting a little thin to us, right? King, queen? I mean, I think it's trying to extract value from hearts. That would be the only possible reason I can come up with. It seems hard to get called by two eights here or something like that for value, right? Like, I think they're just not hanging on. Um, that's all I got, though. I right. don't know what else it could be. And things are going to get pretty complex on the river, solver-wise yeah. here, and that is set up by the fact that it wants Kenny to bet all of his hearts on the turn. Right. Um, the only things it wants him to check are pairs that, that didn't hit the board and complete crap like 10-9 of non-hearts. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, 10-6 of non-hearts would if you will. fit into that category as well. On the river, Kenny is supposed to bluff with his hand after this line. Okay, fine. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it wants him to value bet actually as thin as tens, which feels really thin. It does feel thin. Well, it thinks we can probably, I imagine the solver's like, well, our opponent doesn't really ever have jacks or queens. Yeah. Because right? preflop things probably go differently. I guess it doesn't know all the preflop stuff. We know that though. Yeah. So we can say that. And then, oh man, it's so thin though. Tens. But it's going for it. And this this goes to like what, what we can call with and what we can't call with. Right? It turns out that value betting tens would have been a great idea against Chin, oh as my we God. see. All right, here's the thing that gets really complicated is, is what sixes, which pocket sixes is Chin supposed to call with? Jonathan, lead us through it. Let's I'm going to figure try. this one out. Okay, so the solver wants us to call with two sixes with a heart in our hand, which is sort of the opposite of what we were thinking. The exact opposite. Here's fact. why. Um, because it thinks Kenny's always betting heart combos on the turn. Yeah. And so that means if Kenny's bluffing the river with a 6x suited hand, there are twice as many 6x suited bluffs on the river when we have a heart in our hand because that combo or all those combos would have bluffed the turn in the solver's mind. So instead of having one combo of 6x suited, there's not one, one amount of 6x suited. One of each, suited, yeah. There's, there's twice as many of them that, that Kenny's going to feel obligated to bluff at least some of the time. You did a good job with that. Thanks. It's very complicated. It is. Um, ultimately, we know that that's incorrect as we see Bryn Kenny did check back with the 10 yeah. 6 of hearts. So that kind of throws a wrench in that. But from the solver's perspective... Kenny's always betting his 6x of hearts on the turn, so those are no longer available bluffs. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense from that perspective. Yes. But I'm going right. to stick by my guns and say that with the heart is, is actually, or without the heart is actually better based on reality. Well, we were thinking about it like um, it's great because at least we, you know, having the, not the heart means Kenny can have some, some of those heart draws that he decides to yeah. make the flop with. But if we think he's going to bluff a lot on the river when we, when we take this line, 
I don't know. I, I'm willing to move off my guns. Personally. Yeah, I guess I am too. Guns, whatever. See ya. <laughs> you know, so many of these hands start off seeming like relatively straightforward, and then we get into all the breaking down of it, and it's so the opposite, man. And this hand is a great example of that. Even pre-solver work. There's a lot going on here about like how Kenny's playing the river, his sizing on the river, his decision to, to check the turn, um, Chin's kind of insta-call on the river as well, and then the solver having all its opinions, which are kind of different than what everyone else is doing anyway. You, me, Grant, Bryn, Chin, everyone, right? So where do you guys come down on all this? What do you think is right? What do you think is wrong? What would you do in these spots? Let us know in the comments. And I did mention the Discord uh, earlier on when we were talking about the solver work. Check that out. It's a fun place. It's a great poker community. Uh, the link is in the description. It's the Poker Guys Discord. And, you know, we have fun there. So we'll catch you there.